We were asked to see a 70-year-old man whose heart was being destroyed by sarcoidosis. The medications were failing. He came to us for help. See what happened next. So Camille, tell us about this 70-year-old man with cardiac sarcoidosis and the history of a TIA. So he had come to our office seeking other ways to improve the symptoms of the sarcoidosis, which is an inflammatory systemic condition. It was affecting his eyes, making him have blurry vision. It was making him out of breath easily, making him more tired. And he'd already tried steroids, which are often prescribed for systemic sarcoidosis, but those weren't alleviating his symptoms enough. And in fact, they're causing a side effect, causing all this hyperpigmentation on his skin. So it sounded like he was getting worse with just very few options. I and mean, he was 70 years old. And so I suspect, you know, his doctors weren't too enthusiastic about doing anything too aggressive. Right. And unfortunately, he was feeling bad. I mean, shortness of breath and blurry vision. So a pretty bad, you know, quality of life with the potentially devastating illness. So this is someone that we really had to, to get on top of. So, so what was our assessment? So on his initial heart MRI study in August, it showed a lot of thickening of the heart. 24% of the left side of the heart had swelling in the myocardium or the muscle cells and inflammation. It did show some evidence of mild coronary artery disease as well due to the high blood pressure, high cholesterol, but there's even lymph node involvement in the lungs. So. Wow, wow. You know, that swelling you mentioned, I want the audience to understand, if anyone's ever injured themselves, and I imagine most of you may have, just imagine if you were falling from a bicycle, perhaps, and you hit your arms real hard, maybe the bone's broken, maybe it's not, but you get lots of swelling and redness and bruising. You know, that's acute inflammation. We know what that is in the joints or the surface. The same thing is going on in his heart. Now, if you have severe swelling and bruising in the heart, it can certainly affect the heart's function. Just imagine if your elbow was severely swollen and bruised, you would not be able to move the elbow or function. If your knee was swollen and bruised, the function of that knee would be severely impaired. This patient had significant swelling and bruising in a very vital organ of his body. And so you can only imagine, you know, why he was having so many symptoms because the heart itself was bruised and its function was impaired. So that, those are pretty significant findings. So at high inflammation, and as you know, he was being treated with steroids, which is typically what we do in standard medicine to treat someone with lots of inflammation. Steroids and anti-inflammatory medication, a pretty powerful anti-inflammatory medication at that. But he continued to have symptoms yeah. and problems and side effects to the steroid despite this treatment. So there are other approaches that could be taken that, in my opinion, are more powerful anti-inflammatory approaches. So what was our approach? We told him he needed to eat a lot cleaner than he was. He'd kind of tried the plant base here and there over the years, but we'd only did 50%. So I got him to increase his plant-based eating. It took 75, 80%, you know, we. I kept trying to encourage him, and he did make some improvement there. And I think what helped him stay like that was he noticed he started to feel better. Oh. But I knew he needed a little extra help, so we recommended serapeptase, which is an enzyme that helps break down inflammatory tissue. We recommended curcumin that helps cell function and reduce systemic inflammation, especially in the heart, too. And then we also focused on his gut health. And so we did a supplement that helps clear out bad pathogens in the gut, like a grapefruit seed extract, and then some probiotics to restore the good bacteria to help them absorb the nutrients from the healthy food so his cells could actually work more efficiently. Well, you spoke volumes. First of all, the nutritional regimen. And as you said, he wasn't quote-unquote perfect, certainly didn't meet our ideal status, but He's increased the amount of plant foods, clean plant foods, significantly in his diet, which I think went a long way to help improve his uh, overall well-being. 
plant foods do a number of things that have anti-inflammatory effects. You talk about gut health, which I'll talk about in a minute. It also enhances gut health. It feeds good bacteria. The target supplementation, oftentimes people just take supplements randomly. We use supplements, but we don't just give supplements just randomly. We, we try to use them in a target fashion because, you know, again, they have their place, but they're not perfect. And I like your choice of serpeptase and liposomal curcumin uh, because those work very well together and have a very powerful anti-inflammatory effect. It's my opinion that chronic illnesses rest on three major pillars. One is chronic inflammation. Two is increased oxidative stress. Inflammation I like to describe as a biochemical fire. Your cells and tissues are like on fire as things are in disarray. Oxidative stress is a, a phrase you use to mean that there's excess toxic chemicals flowing around your body that's causing damage. Just think of oxidative stress or like hazardous chemical, biochemical substances floating around. And then the third one, which may be the foundation to the other two, is an abnormal microbiome or a poor gut health. And we frequently target these three areas in some cases, one more than the other, you know, based on the patient presentation. And so to give a therapeutic approach to possibly, you know, kill any potential pathogens, you know, probiotics to help improve gut health, I think was very important. Now, the microbiome is very complex. There's, you know, from a medical science standpoint, we're only scratching the surface in our understanding. So I'm not going to pretend to say that, you know, our treatment there is very precise. But we found this approach would be helpful in general to use a plant-based diet, which evidence shows help the microbiome, a little bit of a probiotic, and then something to treat some common pathogens that we see. And that tends to be a very helpful baseline. The other important point to understand is that the regimen that you started him on has a synergistic effect. So we talk about the anti-inflammatory effects of food, the anti-inflammatory effects of the serapeptase, the anti-inflammatory effects of the liposomal curcumin, the anti-inflammatory effects of healing the gut, but they're working simultaneously, and it's not in an additive form, but I think it's probably creating like an exponential effect, as opposed to just giving them a steroid. There's only one effect that may or may not work, and he had adverse effects to that. So how did you do what did, where were I follow up on? I mean, he did great. His energy level shot up and he was able to exercise more. He wasn't getting out of breath with basic activities. Even his vision got better as well. And when we redid that study to assess the sarcoidosis, there was no more edema or swelling in the heart muscle. The inflammatory markers went down. So, and that was only in like two months. Two months, yeah. so not two years, not 10 years, just two months. Mm -hmm. Again, the powerful effects of these interventions that work synergistically, not only they're more effective, but they're more effective in a much more rapid way. And the patient gets better, not worse. You know, the adverse effects of this therapy is that the patient feels better. The adverse effects of the steroids is hyperpigmentation and failure of therapy. So it's it's really quite interesting how the body can turn itself around when it's positioned in the right way with the right type of intervention. So I hope this was helpful to you. And uh, again, as usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section. Our team will love to get back with you. Until the next video, take care. Thanks for watching. If you got value out of this video, Please like it, subscribe, and hit the notification button to see our next show.